Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Can from Istanbul, Turkey, and I am with Sarkan today. And we will be talking about the playing with electricity and red teaming in power distribution companies or hacking in the power distribution uh, companies. Uh, before getting started, uh, I would like to thank the ICS Village team having us. It's really a great opportunity to meet you all. Uh, we really like to be part of the community activities all over the world. Uh, we also some uh, community activities in Turkey as well. So it's really great to be uh, meeting you all over here. Basically, we have one hour uh, with you and basically we have three parts of uh, presentation. Uh, the first part is overview. We will make a brief information, uh, give a brief information about the electricity architecture and power distribution company architecture uh, and give you some SCADA, SCADA application architecture uh, upon it. And then we will discuss red team scenarios and then uh, we will perform some attacks on our simulation lab. Uh, actually, thanks to Sarkan, uh, our simulation lab uh, had some nerve issues. We changed our uh, hardware like four times uh, last three days, uh, but it, it worked at the end of the day and we make video, uh, videos for uh, this presentation uh, to avoid any uh, problems. Uh, so we will have some uh, videos and we will talk upon it. All right, so let's do it. So Sarkan, please go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Jan. Uh, first of all, good afternoon for the American side spectator and maybe good night or good evening for the European and Asian side spectator. First of all, I'd like to thank you for giving us for opportunity in this beautiful organization and I'd like to express my pleasure being there. Now I will give, give information about myself. I am Serkan Temal. I am electric and electronic engineer. I have seven years experience about industrial control systems, SCADA systems based on uh, electric distribution, transmission and power generation. For the last one year of the, my career, I'm focused on the cybersecurity in SCADA systems and also focused on the industrial control system cybersecurity topics. Thank you, John. We can go on now presentation. I am also an electric, electronic engineer and I, I have more than eight years uh, cybersecurity background. And last five years, I mostly concentrated on uh, critical infrastructure and I say uh, SCADA uh, cybersecurity. At the moment, we both working for uh, CyberWise uh, for uh, critical infra infrastructure cybersecurity uh, at the moment. And today, uh, as we mentioned, uh, we will discuss uh, electricity subsector and power distribution, red teaming, and cybersecurity. All right, uh, we want to start with why electricity matters. Actually, um, it's not just for us, but all for all rest of the world. Uh, it's the backbone of all critical infrastructure. When it fails, it directly affects affects uh, the daily life or the uh, modern life fundamentals. And for example, it affects health sector, uh, transport, transport sector, transportation. Uh, and uh, finance sector and so on. So once it fails, it directly affects uh, people and public uh, safety and it's a really backbone of uh, the critical infrastructure. So we want to take uh, that part and uh, we wanted to build a presentation upon it. So we will be discussing about the uh, red team in uh, power distribution companies, but before it, we need to understand the electricity architecture in a process wise. Uh, basically, it has three parts. Uh, we have power generation, uh, we have transmission lines, and then we have a uh, power distribution part. Uh, most of the time, uh, power plants and power generation located in the out of the city centers. Uh, that means uh, we need to carry electricity a uh, long way of kilometers. Uh, it means we require the transmission lines. And finally, that means uh, we need power up down operations. Once we, we are over from the transmission lines, we came up to the uh, power distribution. Actually, it is the last line of the customer touch. I mean, if something fails in power distribution part, uh, it directly affects customer and our uh, business. To be honest, uh, the distribution companies and uh, electricity distribution process is not too much complicated when we compare it to power plants 
uh, or the petrochemical uh, industry. Uh, so it is easy to attack and also it is easy to defend. Uh, Sarkar, would you like to add yes, something? I would like to at some point uh, in that presentation. Uh, we Today we tell you distribution, electric distribution, but I would like to uh, be aware of this point. Uh, transmission layer is the critical part of the electricity architecture because it's a bridge between power generation and power distribution. And it's the backbone of the electricity architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, today topics are distribution, electricity, but uh, transmission is very, very critical in the cybersecurity perspective. And actually, it depends uh, over the countries or over the uh, regions. Uh, sometimes it's operated by the government, sometimes it's operated by the uh, private companies. It really depends on the region and uh, country's perspective. Uh, but I really agree with you that it's transmission lines also uh, the uh, core of the electricity architecture. Thank you. So let's deep dive into the power uh, or electricity distribution infrastructure. First of all, it's a really great example of the SCADA because you have the people, which means the supervisory element of the SCADA, and you have remote locations, as you can see on the screen. There are lots of different uh, substation connected via different type of communication uh, medias to your control center or emergency control center. So what we said, it's a great example of the SCADA application because you get data from all over the different, different uh, remotely located substation and sometimes you control over the remote substations. So on the other hand, you have remote offices like payment offices, headquarters, government agencies to report for, or you have direct integration. For example, in Turkey, renewable uh, power plants uh, has to report the uh, nearest uh, power distribution company uh, for the regulation. Basically, uh, what we can say, there are lots of uh, remote locations we have that we need to control. And that means we need different types of communication media. In distribution companies, we really need to take care of the uh, communication uh, media security uh, as a part of the defense uh, mechanism. On the other hand, sometimes uh, some companies or some governments or some uh, countries has uh, smart meter application, which means smart meters has direct affected electricity. Uh, they open and close uh, the electricity via uh, metering control center uh, through the uh, smart meters. Uh, why I'm telling you this? Because it will affect our uh, red teaming scenarios and understanding the uh, infrastructure. What we need to understand from uh, this slide, uh, we need the loss of uh, high level of connectivity. There are different types of communication media and we have loss of different type of uh, substation and equipment. And the rest of it, we have lots of different type of integration all right i gone all right i will I give a brief information and pass to uh Sarkan stage we discuss about the electricity architecture and then we discuss about the power uh, distribution architecture now we will discuss about the cicada architecture uh, it's also distributed in the server side but before jumping into it we need to understand there is a need of a uh, high level of uh, connectivity uh, in a, such a uh, power distribution company. Sometimes we need to connect the outage management system, ERP application, call center, and so on. Maybe so I can give uh, some example about that. Uh, yes, we um, mentioned about the previous uh, presentation we, that we said we said that uh, distribution, electric distribution, touch the customs. So. This means that in the distribution company, uh, so many customers works into the, like customers management, outage management, VFMs, uh, other stuff, so many stuff for the customers. Uh, reason of that, uh, the distribution SCADA systems must be and have to be integrated IT software applications, like John mentioned that OMS. OMS, like VFM, like uh, the other uh, companies, uh, third party softwares. Uh, because of that, uh, distribution SCADA systems a little bit different from the transmission and uh, power generation SCADA systems. And, and also, 
and also in the distribution network, so many substations. This means that so many data, so many connection station. So it's uh, we need the powerful systems. We have to separate the, this load to the separate server, like application server, like communication server, like data server, like backup server, and so on, like HMI server. Uh, so distribution scatter systems a little bit distributed and separated structure. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, similar to uh, IT environment, actually. You have some type of application servers, communication servers. It do some kind of uh, load balancing and it requires really great integration of uh, IT application or business application. Sometimes it's part of SCADA applications like the called outage management system or call center. They are directly talking or integrating with the our SCADA application because once you have a blackout or a kind of blackout or shutdown electricity, you will get some calls, you need to reach out to your customers, you need to get some data from SCADA. So it's really integrated with your IT application, sometimes cloud applications. And on the other hand, you have untrusted parties like vendors, remote offices, uh, other type of control centers or government agencies. So sometimes it's done uh, via the firewall, sometimes it's directly connected to your industrial equipments. Uh, it really depends on the uh, customer strategy uh, or sometimes they are not really aware of what kind of uh, communication uh, channels they have. But what we need to remember through here, uh, this, our SCADA architecture is distributed uh, as a server roles and it, it's like an IT application and integrate, it has integration with the uh, business side. And also it talks to the substation through the, uh, our communication uh, media. So I will leave the comments uh, to Sarkhan about substation because it's his expertise Lots of uh, now we have talked about the substation architecture and the substation architecture and distribution substation process. We have some main devices for the process we use. And the first one is Retio. Retio is a telecontroller uh, which connects uh, field devices to the SCADA systems. We think that the uh, data concentrated or data transfer devices. RTU. Uh, energy analyzer is an energy meter which get information from the CT and VT uh, transformer from electric sites information and translate in the digital sites and give and directly send this information to SCADA systems. Uh, protection relay it is a critical equipment in the distribution and also transmission and also generation as you, as you know that. Protection relay is the first IAD device, first electronic device connected physical electric system. It is a bridge, cyber, and physical world. Mm -hmm. Re reason of that protection relay is the most critical parts and most critical device in the distribution systems. Uh, as we know, in cybersecurity perspective, if you want to shut down the electricity, you have to control the protection relay. But maybe you can attack the retro, maybe attack the SCADA systems. It is just uh, blocked our monitoring from the field site. But if we want to control the electricity, shut down the electricity, or re energize the electricity, you have to control protection relay. The fourth device is the smart meter. Smart meter, as you know, that's for billing purposes and maybe low volt site for customer sites. Uh, shut down electricity or re energized electricity. This last two devices is uh, physical device. Mention is uh, the first one is low volt circuit breaker. It is control the electricity line. And the last one is the medium voltage cubicles, means uh, circuit breaker also inside these cubicles. It controls the electricity line networks. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Yes. Yes, we had line IAD device, protection light device. This is, a, I would like to say it again because it is very critical. I, protection device uh, has two parts. One of the hardware, the otherwise the software. The hardware sites, they have analog 
inputs, analog output, digital input, digital output and the other cellular Ethernet interface. Uh, voltage and current information uh, takes with analog inputs modules and also control analog system like set points, power, uh, like set about the frequency, let's set about the voltage. Uh, you have to send analog outputs and digital inputs and digital outputs mostly critical uh, because digital inputs comes from basically circuit breaker position, isolator position, the other information about the physical systems and digital outputs is control the circuit breakers means that you control the electricity because of that in the scalar systems and most of the communication protocols or animal detection or the cyber security perspective we focus on the digital output signal. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning of the, this device, they have serial interface because in that time no Ethernet IP world. And today most of device has Ethernet interface and it gains advantage of the Ethernet IP world. Uh, but it is some cause of the side effect from cybersecurity, this gains of advantages. Uh, I will tell about later. In the software side, communication protocol. Communication protocols means that industry communication protocol, like Modbus, like Protobus, like IC104, DMP3, the other. Uh, this helps communicate with R2 or communicate with the SCADA systems to send information to the upper level. Mm -hmm. Logic functions control the like circuit breaker or other blocking material functions, logic functions, and configuration interface. So this is the critical part of the IED device. As I mentioned that they have Ethernet interface and most of IED device nowadays use web service interface for configuration software or configuration interface. So this is the some vulnerability about uh, systems as the weak point of the, this IED device nowadays. Thank you, Sarkan. Actually, uh, we always get afraid or get freaked about to touch uh, such intelligent electronic devices because, as you mentioned, one part is physical that controls electricity and one part is cyber. Uh, it's RTU or uh, SCADA applications. And it's like a last uh, line of the uh, uh, physical and cyber uh, breach. Uh, once you, uh, you control it, uh, you control the electricity, you can control it through the R2, or you can directly send commands to the IAD, or you can trigger some uh, SCAD application uh, set points, and it will directly affect the intelligent electronic devices. But once you're planning a red teaming or pen testing activity, you need to be aware of uh, such a devices can affect the electricity, and you need to be really uh, careful what you are playing with. All right, so now we can discuss about red teaming uh, approach and red teaming uh, scenarios. Before jumping into the uh, details, uh, I wanted to um, discuss uh, how much red is that? Because since it's a critical infrastructure, since it's a last line of the custom touch, uh, can we be really free to be really red teaming? In that case, most of the asset owners and most of the cybersecurity companies uh, get afraid to or avoid the uh, consequences of um, bad thing happen. So uh, I may say that uh, nobody does directly red teaming. Maybe it's like light pink teaming, let's say, because we really need to be aware of that. The public safety and process safety is much more important than uh, your uh, color uh, activity. Uh, so you really need to take care of uh, the process, you need to take care of the public safety because we always think in a that way, if we shut down electricity for the hospital and if we kill uh, someone in that hospital because of no electricity. So uh, it really has a great boundary for us to uh, do our tests or pen testing activities or red teaming activities in a controlled way. So it's not really red, uh, light pink maybe, uh, but uh, to understand each other in a better way, uh, I want to express uh, that part as well. So I, want, I would like to mention about the core steps. Uh, we divide into five main steps. 
actually we discuss about the first two of them uh, to understand the process understand the architecture architecture once you do any retaining activity in any kind of uh, ICS infrastructure in that case uh, we are talking about the power distribution uh, we gave brief information about the electricity architecture distribution architecture SCADA architecture uh, and substation architecture and we thought that um, power distribution companies process is not too much complicated we have very limited type of uh, signals compared to power plants and uh, petrochemicals so it's a really easy process uh, to easy to attack and easy to defend now we need to define uh, our landscape and then uh, we will try to create some kind of scenarios to directly uh, develop for the retaining activity uh, usage and then uh, finally we will perform some kind of attacks in our simulation lab um, I don't want to talk about the IT based or getting into the IT and then jumping into OT kind of uh, red teaming activities or landscape. But once you are talking about the uh, power distribution red teaming, uh, we wanted to give you brief landscape information that what you need to know, what you are going to face and how, how it will affect uh, your planning. Uh, so basically we have uh, eight categories that we will discuss today uh, the first one is protocol there are different types of protocols uh, you will see in the field in the distribution companies basically in SCADA part I mean the wide area uh, network you will see ISC 104 and DMP3 and substation level you will see different types of uh, protocols sometimes goes MMS and so on and upper level in supervisor level you will see so fast and uh, uh, the control level you will see modbus tcp r2 even sometimes seri protocols and then if you have smart meters and even in SCADA application you may have the power line communication it's not it's still plc but it's a different term we will discuss it today as well and then we said that communication media is very important if you get into the communication media somehow let's say you get into the APN network uh, based on GSM or you get into the uh, RF uh, signals uh, you then directly interact with substations, interact with R2s and interact with control center equipments and emergency control center equipment. So communication media is also too much important for us to uh, red teaming planning. On the other hand, you need to be aware of the third party integration. Uh, there are different types of uh, integration. It depends on the country and region and uh, the regulation. Uh, you see uh, some of them uh, in our list. And also, as an asset owner, you have some kind of uh, remote locations or local locations like control center, energy control center, metering control center, headquarters, payment offices, or communication center for like RF uh, towers. So. Asset owner uh, locations also matters to us. On the other hand, uh, substation is very important for us because it is remote located uh, and uh, physical and cyber uh, control is very limited compared to control center or uh, emergency control uh, center or headquarter. In that case, you will be facing with industrial protocols on industrial devices and you may apply some kind of popping attacks. What I mean by that, you once you get into the uh, specific uh, remote substation you can jump over the other substation you can jump over the control center or emergency control center you may create some fake signals it's like coming from the old uh, remote substation and so on so it's very great entry point and great uh, defense uh, point for us uh, but i should stress out that uh, in substation, we have some physical controls. For example, if someone opens the door or if someone opens the cabinet, if someone you know, moving in the substation, it creates some alerts uh, and sends signals over the 104 of the control center. So we still have some type of controls that we need to be aware of when we plan SOC activities or when we plan red teaming activities. On the other hand, technology, uh, I'm sure that all the villagers uh, have a proper knowledge of uh, them. I don't want to express each of them because 
it's like the IT wise uh, pen testing or red teaming because it's server network devices and some kind of <coughs> field devices. So I don't want to go each of them. And on the other hand, we have people, for example, in Turkey, we have a specific regulation for um, assessment in the uh, power generation and distribution companies, and it requires a social engineering uh, activities uh, for the energy people, let's say, the asset owner uh, people. Sometimes we see that uh, some red team activities hit the vendor engineers or OT partner or engineering company engineers. Uh, so uh, the people's uh, segment is also uh, really um, very and uh, different types of uh, mechanisms they have. For example, in Turkey, we need to do physical pen testing, we need to do uh, phone calling, we need to do uh, email based uh, social engineering. It's all written down uh, by the regulation. And also yet another landscape for us, the industrial process. Uh, we will discuss it yet in another conference because uh, since it is the less signals and it's less complicated in the power distribution and power industry, uh, the industrial uh, process vulnerabilities may affect the public safety directly. So we avoid to mention uh, the entry points of um, uh, process vulnerabilities, but we can discuss it uh, later in uh, for another industries uh, on the following days. All right, so I hope we understood the process, we understood the architecture and define some kind of landscape. Again, it may change the region, country and the regulation, but we need to understand uh, the basics of a distribution. So we need to create some kind of scenarios. In this presentation, we created uh, three types of uh, scenario. We have created a specific uh, table for that. I will discuss it through them. And it's again, not IT based uh, red teaming or pen testing. Uh, we try to create some kind of uh, directly effect on electricity based um, scenarios. So in this scenario, we had the chance to work with our IoT team leader and hardware uh, security team leader uh, with Fatih Kairan. Actually, he developed this scenario and applied in the field. Uh, once upon a time, we were in the distribution company and came up with the idea that we figured out uh, somehow the smart meters were controlling the uh, city's um, electricity, which means uh, we, if we could find a way to uh, send a proper comment, smart meters, uh, it will directly shut down the electricity. Uh, in that case, uh, that smart meters were talking through the power line communication. And uh, so we created our scenario based on this. So to understand the team made to each other in a better way, we create such a table uh, to define our success criteria, difficulty factors, uh, and decide if the change is required or not. I will go through the one table and uh, I will pass through the rest of it because uh, we will perform a real time uh, simulation uh, for the rest of it. In this scenario, uh, we targeted the shutdown electricity, but before jumping into that, uh, we classified our tactic and techniques uh, based on Maitre, manipulation of control and manipulation of weave. And our, our entry points was smart meters power line communication. Complexity uh, in this uh, uh, scenario was high, difficulty was high because unknown protocols uh, were there, specific hardware design is required and high voltage work environment is, is can be dangerous uh, because we lost one of our laptop and uh, one of our team uh, member got injured uh, during this test because you work with the high voltage directly with the plugs. Uh, to better understanding, uh, you plug the smart meter uh, into the uh, city network. Uh, so you turn into the, that uh, specific uh, smart meter into weapon uh, to target uh, to the electricity uh, for a better understanding. I will discuss it uh, through uh, this presentation. So dependency was the communication interface reverse engineering or protocol reverse engineering. Record time was high for us. 
And also, what was our success criteria? Understand the protocol, send and receive packets on the power line, send command to cut off the electricity uh, for a defined uh, area. Sometimes we create some SOC success criteria for our customers uh, to detect better the uh, next attacks. In that case, it could be hardware uh, or smart meter log management, OMS log management, call center log management, or smart meter application log management could be a success criteria in that case. We define log sources uh, for red teaming activities, and then we define a corpus method and uh, kill chain activity. In that case, our purpose was shut down the electricity via unexpected point of entry through unexpected communication media, turn plug and meters into industrial attack equipment. So our idea was simple. So power line communication works through the uh, power signals. You modulate it and put uh, your data into the electricity signals. So it directly talks through the electricity. I think uh, there, yesterday uh, there was a specific session about that. In that case, we will uh, look into the, how it's used in uh, distribution companies. In that case, we have a data concentrator, which is directly connected to different types of customers, almost tightening, and there are smart meters, and there are some uh, power line communication uh, interfaces, and it connects to the backend system through the APN, in that case, over the internet. So guess what? It was the broadcast messages going through the, uh, the specific power line. Uh, if you have specific hardware, you can develop it or you can uh, turn smart meter into the, your tool. In that case, uh, we made it and we, we, were under, we were able to understand the reading data and the shutdown electricity commands. So since it's broadcast, each of uh, smart meters get the data. And once you give order, everyone gets the order, but one of them uh, apply it and report back to uh, center. So once uh, you sniff the data, you see the smart meter ID. And in that case, the power line communication uh, will using uh, the DLSM QSM protocol. In that case, uh, that specific number defines the shutdown electricity command, like the double, double command in. 104, uh, very similar. And also in that case, we were able to got readout data. In, in this case, this is the readout code for uh, the LSM QSM uh, protocol. What we are trying to say that you don't directly attack the SCADA application, RTUs or IADs. The best way and easy way Find the yet another proper line to end of your goal. So in that case, the power line communication and smart meters uh, gave us a chance to shut down the electricity, but you need to deal with uh, high voltage electricity. You need to deal with power line communication, new type of protocols, modulation, demodulation and encryption uh, type of things require much more time. But most of the time, the asset owners and the pen tester doesn't pay attention on the dead channel. So you really uh, create a value for your customer and the people uh, safety in that case. So uh, as I know, the European countries also have great implementation of smart meters. Uh, we don't need to take care of uh, these standards as well. Okay, so our last two uh, scenarios based on the RTUs and uh, industrial protocols, we will show how to do it uh, industrial red teaming in, in a real lab environment, uh, which took days for Serka and uh, got old <laughs> during these uh, sessions. Basically, we have uh, two different scenarios uh, for this presentation, one of them uh, extracting data from config files without further reverse engineering or further implementation of anything. Uh, think about that, you have some type of configuration files, you don't have any access to OT environment or substation yet, but 
you will figure it out some type of data to plan your uh, next session of red teaming activities. We have a specific example of that. Since I discussed uh, deeply and uh, very detailed the last uh, table, I don't want to discuss it, uh, losing any time on that. Uh, so I will jump into the next one because we will discuss it real uh, scenario. The yet another scenario for uh, this session is the remote substation protocol attack. Um, in that case, uh, the attacker needs to interact with the substation equipments. It can be done uh, via Raspberry Pi implementation and connect to the Wi-Fi and so on, like we did in our uh, lab environment. And we will shut down the electricity using the uh, protocol uh, commands. Once we understand what kind of protocols used and how, once we understand the protocols, we will uh, figure it out to where to send the data and finally send the data to shut down the electricity. To have better understanding each other, uh, what we are trying to say, uh, if you are planning to red teaming activity in a power distribution company uh, or assessment, uh, you need to understand the uh, process, you need to understand the architecture, you need to understand the landscape. Once you have a three element, then you can create your scenarios. You need to think uh, out of the box, but that box doesn't mean you can go out to public safety rules or process safety rules. So it's really <laughs> hard to balance. Um, and we want to give you uh, some simple ideas uh, to reach out your end goal, uh, rather than uh, implementing some IT-based or IT-related uh, red teaming activities. I think I can be free <laughs> from now and put Saikan into fire. <laughs> So thank you, John. Thank you, John. Uh, as a traditional, we yeah, have face to face with the Murphy's rule. Yeah. That's John. But finally, we succeed on the setup of lab. Mm -hmm. Now we have, I have give information about lab setup. Uh, we, it's a very simple part of substation process. We have one Artus uh, ABB one four zero and one ID device, uh, one SCADA server, SCADA PCs, and also one switch. Uh, we use Capware software as a SCADA master. And also uh, we use Modbus TCP protocol and also IS1 over 4 protocol. Modbus TCP uh, use in uh, IAD device between R2 and IS1 over 4. Uh, we use it R2 between SCADA, yes, and Capware device. Uh, the tricky part is the uh, hard, implemented hardware substation as an attacker. We think that we have uh, some Raspberry Pi device or the other device uh, as attacker machine. Uh, before jumping into details, uh, I would like to mention that uh, this setup doesn't indicate any one of these on ABV R2 use. Uh, it's just a simple RT that we could use uh, on the market and we knew how to configure it. So we will do some protocol-based uh, simulation, uh, but it doesn't just affect the ABB. It's based on the leverage of the protocol usage, actually, to avoid any misunderstanding. And also, it is very common uh, RT used in Europe and Asian sites. Mm -hmm. this, and also, this is the second reason we choose this RT. Now we can jump yeah. into the labs videos. All right. So we will start with interfaces and signals. Uh, the first video is about uh, configuration RTU. I jump into that just a second. Yes, we use RTU util 500 software for programming RTU configuration the RTU. We created it before and open existing project. This part a little bit takes time. 
it may be boring. They hide the project file deep inside <laughs> my file system. Yes. And Turkish character error. Now, this is the R2 Util 500 software interface. This is the network tree. We have three communication line. One is IAC 104 for SCADA communication. The other one is Modbus TCP for ID device, Modbus communication line. You can easily see that some parameter of the communication protocol. Yes, it is the one on four communication protocol setup. As you see that Astro address, Astro address structure, inform structure, maximum length of ID, and then this is the Modbus TCP site configuration. This is network tree. Uh, the, now we in hardware tree. In the hardware site, we choose our R2 main CPU model, and also we add the field level signal information in that site, hardware site. And also, as you see that the Modbus TCP communication configuration zone. This is the IP address of the IED device. And also the again one of four configuration section. Now this is the uh, retro interfaces. This is the they it has two Ethernet interfaces. As you see that IP address of the interfaces. And this site, we configured our field level signal, like active power. That is the Modbus site. We told them register index number 13. And this is the SCADA IS-104 site. Astro address 1, information object address 103. And the other single, like phase A current, phase B current. We record all and show the all parameters of the signal. Because we, you may we want to that. your lab, uh, and maybe you want to replay mm -hmm. your own lab. So uh, we want to give you brief info in mm -hmm. this section. The other sections will be uh, much more faster, <laughs> let's say. Uh, but once you understand that part, the configuration, uh, it's much more easier to understand the rest of the uh, simulation. This is a type of the Modbus signal, as you see that force commands, signal commands, and register read call status. Read call status used for the uh, information, single point information, digital input, like position of circuit breaker. And switch control means that sends control command to the circuit breaker. Power limit set point, and the other metering information. Phase A current, phase B current, phase C current. It's a very simple model of the substation. So we can jump into the second Second, one. Speed. second report. In this report, we directly connect the red to web interfaces. As you see, that's this is the IP address of the First Ethernet interface, use username and password. In that site, uh, you can easily see that configuration management site. You see that the configuration file, which configuration is now active. When you update this configuration file and also get configuration file from the device and also delete this configuration. Etc. And also the on sites, you can easily monitor signal system log, system event status, and client session log. And also hardware tree. Hardware tree is the live monitoring about R2, especially in the site. You see that R2 is active. R2 is operable means that it's connected to IED device. As you see that CPI switch position is on, 
and also metering information about systems. It is live data, real time data. Now I can talk about a little bit configuration file, if you wish. Uh, our third video related to configuration file and extracting some uh, data. Again, it doesn't integrate any vulnerabilities on the R2, but somehow if you reach out to backup systems or if you reach out the file server and the IT system, uh, once we have a configuration file, now we will download it and extract some data from it. It's really easy actually uh, before further uh, reverse engineering uh, implementation. In that case, uh, we are not into the uh, remote substation. We are not in the control room. Somehow we get data uh, about the configuration file. It can be engineering workstation, file server again, or uh, backup system, maybe a engineering uh, partner uh, workstation. Once I get the configuration file, I am directly able to see what kind of R2 is used, what version, uh, what purpose they are using, what kind of interfaces and what kind of IP addresses uh, they have. And, <coughs> sorry, and also what kind of protocols they have. It will affect my further planning actually in the red teaming activity, what kind of devices connected with that RTU in substation and what kind of signal parameters they are looking for it. So once I have that information without any probing, any scanning activity or um, any physical attachment, it's really leverage of your effort once you have uh, that kind of specific knowledge. We have also some uh, specific uh, projects that the reverse engineering read other data, not, uh, not uh, people readable format at the moment you have much more better uh, information and uh, knowledge about the uh, targeted system. So in that case, we want to show you, you don't need to go to the uh, control center or uh, remote substation. Uh, somehow, if you are able to get config files, you may read directly with the Notepad++ and read some data, understand the process, understand the protocols, interfaces, and plan a better red teaming activity or uh, targeted attack into the uh, targeted system. So I will jump into the your part, Sarkan. Yes. The fourth video is about uh, normal traditional application and communication with SCADA systems and RETU. First of all, I would like to show to my IP address and same subnets with the R2 interface one. And then we use, said before, CAPS server as a SCADA software, SCADA master program. This is the configuration of the master sites, CAPware sites, CAPS server sites configuration file. As you see that uh, communication address, common address. Advanced settings, network interface. As we have same subnet, same address. More advanced parameter for IC one and four, originator address like, and also network interface. Network interface means that it is the red IP of the radio and the port of the IC one over four. And this side, uh, we also configure our signal. This means that it is analog short float value. Astro address one over three. And so it is the breaker control command, command single command means J, say J. Actually, it will directly affect the open and close uh, breakers uh, later then we will apply some scenarios. It's really important to understand what type of uh, parameter and what type of commands they take. Now we connect to the R2, as you see that this is the real-time data. As you see, active power 2400 
and also breaker control is zero. Breaker position is one means that the closed. Now we send the breaker control. Control command is one. Yes, it takes the command. Uh, in the real time, on real time operation, when we send this command, we reanalyze the circuit breaker or shut down the circuit breaker with this command. All right. Now, and also I would like to show some Wireshark traffics between Capware and Retu. This is the Ethernet. We apply our display filter for IS-104. Yes, as you see that it is a test frame in the protocol. Now we resend the command again and show the traffic. Yes, this is command, single command. Astro address 1 over 7, as you see that, this is the Warshark single command. Address is 1, IO address is 107, and also set command value is 0, as you see. You can easily uh, get this information from the Wireshark, because the IC104 is an open text protocol, not encrypted or hashing port hash protocol. So you can easily get information from the traffic. In that case, uh, you see that the single or double commands uh, take place in uh, ISC 104. In that case, we sent a specific shutdown or open command uh, in a targeted uh, area. Uh, in case it was zero, it means we shut down the electricity through a legitimate uh, traffic. I mean, it was a traffic generated by the control center. Now, we will try to apply as a attacker point of view uh, who is in the remote substation uh, via implemented hardware. This is the five video of us. Yes, we have information about the second interface uh, about R2. Now in the attacker machine, I configure my IP address for the second interface of the R2, as you see. Now, I use MMAP for some research and some search vulnerability or open ports. In that case, we are looking for who has uh, the IOC 104 in that case, in that protocol. Uh, use specific ports uh, if nobody change it. So we are looking for in same subnet if mm -hmm. someone has that specific protocol. Please be aware it's an attacker uh, point of view and got into the substation looking for some IOC 104 endpoints and two device. We find it, found mm -hmm. it. This is the retail device as you see from the IP address and also. I guess 104 is open port and also service is up. Mm -hmm. But now we have only information about RTUS protocols and RTUS IP address, but we don't any information about the signal and signal address. Now we use capware again. Uh, we configure capware again, as you see. We tried it one. Now it's connected to Retu. Now in the protocol structure, uh, we have general integration commands. When we send this command, R2 get re response uh, and sends all information about in this R2 insight. We send J command to the Retu. 
I don't know any information about the object address, but when we send this command, R2 responds to this command, and now we can easily observe which address and which type of information inside of it. As you see that, so address is one, IO address is 100, and value is also, as you see, 332, etc., etc. So basically, protocol gives an opportunity to us to pull mm -hmm. all kind of signals and data from the RTU for a specific uh, protocol line. As an attacker, uh, we use exact same uh, mm -hmm. tool, uh, but it's simulation environment. Again, you can use your in, uh, lab environment, that uh, specific tool. Yet another tool we have, it's developed by, uh, I think, the master degree student mm -hmm. in Germany called ISC test and to be make sure all of you we will send the latest command to the that uh, specific tool. Mm -hmm. On next again Retu. Now we send command again. Get information from traffic and also we send command to 107 as you see from the Wireshark traffic. We send commands and also on of on command. Mm -hmm. And also as you from traffic, it is action confirmation from the two mm -hmm. in number of line 18 and 37. GSC SC NA at confirmation. As you see, this means that R2 accept this comment. Basically, process this comment. Once you get into the substation, you pull data uh, through the protocol and you send uh, the command through the protocol again. In that case, single command and double command supported by the 104. Uh, and then you are able to uh, shut down the electricity. In that case, if it's your end goal, uh, you, you may apply very different type of scenarios and red teaming activities, but we want to show you that it can be done. There are some safety mechanisms or uh, configuration mechanisms to avoid it. Sometimes you implement the IP-based solution or anomaly detection solution to count that kind of activities. So in this session, uh, we are end of the, our presentation with takeaways. Uh, we would like to stress out. During great teaming activity, we need to think out of the box, but we still need to take care of public and process safety. It's really a rule of thumb for us. Power distribution environment is not complicated as process-wise uh, when compared to power plants or petrochemical, but it has direct effect to the other critical infrastructures and customers directly. Power distribution companies have lots of different interdependencies. Therefore, information gets a crucial role for red teaming activities. And power distribution companies easy to target and easy to defend compared to other ICS infrastructure. So we have two minutes left. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, we will be on Discord as well, uh, as well as, as well as we can. Uh, so Sarkan, if you have any comment, please do it. Or uh, we can get to questions. If you have any questions, we are we will be in Discord. We will be happy for your answer for your questions. Mm -hmm. John and uh, Serkan, uh, thank you for your talk. I noted in the uh, Discord speaker Q and A that I consider this a mandatory talk to watch for both learning about 101 and assessments. So uh, really, really appreciate uh, y'all dialing, dialing in and supporting us. Thank you very much, having us. I hope you enjoy.